and you're planning a trip to the Disneyland Resort in June, and maybe you'd like a little advice on how to make the most out of your visit. Well, we'll hear for you. We'll guide you through everything going on in the parks in June, the shows, the events, we've got the weather, the ride closures, we'll even predict the crowds and more. This is our Disneyland planning guide for the month of June. Let's go. Peter Pan is a little light. I was gonna say, like, it's not a short line, but it's shorter than shorter than it should be. It would be in here. So that's June in years past, and you know, I think to open this review of what to expect in June, I should open with the idea that there's an expectation of what the park is like in the summer months, and then there's a reality. Uh, and June is one of those months where you think it's gonna be one thing, but it's kinda not, uh, especially when it comes to crowds, which we're gonna get into, and, and, and things to do, which we're also gonna get into. This year, we'll have a little bit more to do during the summer months than we did last year, during June specifically. Actually, you know what, let's do get into that. Let's get into the crowds for a minute because when I hear people talk about what the busiest times of the year are at Disneyland, summer is often mentioned as one of those. People talk about that being the peak season. And it could be the case that that, that was the case maybe many years ago, but it certainly is no longer the case. The busiest times of the year are gonna be the, the, the holiday seasons, Christmas and Halloween. Last June, if remember, I dab for dance, last June was actually quite dead. Uh, and But historically speaking, I can say that the first two weeks of June is actually a nice little sweet spot where you get super light crowds. Part of that has to do with the fact that you're not getting, not all of the kids are out of class yet or out of school. You know, the, 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 the breaks are, are staggered a little bit depending on which district you're in. But just suffice it to say, as we look at some of these crowds from years past, it's not as bad as you would think. The crowds here are not as bad as you would think. I would say they're probably gonna be light to moderate the first two weeks, and then the second two weeks of June, you might get a little closer to moderate. But what it isn't is busy, and it hasn't been that way for a few years now. Now, definitely it is the case that busy is a relative term, there are guests who are here once a year or once every couple years, and this will all look busy <laughs> to them. But I would say that you're talking to somebody who's in the parks two or three times a week and have been for the past 10 years or so. Uh, so my, my frame of reference is such that I compare it to, you know, it's a relative term. I compare it to what I have experienced in the past. So it may still seem busy to, to some, but what I'm saying is that it's not as busy as you think it will be or it has been perhaps five or 10 years ago. One thing that I might be preparing myself for this year though, as opposed to last year, is that there has been an increase in the amount of interest and sales of Genie Plus. So crowd levels are probably gonna be about the same as they have been the last few years, but I feel like the standby wait times might be a little bit higher than we've seen in years past because there are more people getting Genie Plus today than there were a year ago. I just like crowds at Disneyland in the month of June being split in half in a way. So too is the weather, at least that's the case this year. And like crowds, there's an expectation that June is actually gonna be a super hot month. It is not, we don't get super hot here in Southern California until at least July, more likely August. So June is actually gonna be kind of light to moderate again, depending on which website you use to get your weather information from. Uh, this is AccuWeather. And they're predicting whether uh, you know, the first half of the month to be in the low 70s to the low 80s. Kind of mild actually, kind of nice. It hasn't fully hit that, that hot weather yet. Uh, it's mostly sunny, not a lot of you know, cloud cover or anything like that. Uh, temperatures will increase a little bit in the back half of the month, the last two weeks, where you're gonna see temps from the low 80s to the mid 80s, but still not hitting anything near 90. You might see something like 85. Now that, that's on the outside and again, this depends on which website you're using. And even more noteworthy about this is the fact that you're still gonna get cooler temperatures in the mornings and in the evenings. 
Uh, Southern California is notorious for having a wide disparity, a wide range in their temperatures. It's not hot all the time, uh, especially in the month of June, in the first part of summer. You're still gonna get lows in the 50s in the mornings and the evenings. So you want it, this is, this is when we talk about what to pack, when you're talking about what to, what to bring with you to the park, layers are essential uh, to Disneyland. And, and that's the case throughout the year, but especially in, the, in uh, a month like June, where you might have a greater range. You're gonna have super highs and super lows. So do, I, I prefer like a long sleeve t-shirt underneath uh, a regular t-shirt. You wear the t-shirt, you know, take off the long sleeve t-shirt when it gets super hot, put it back on in the morning or in the evenings. Next, let's talk about one of my favorite conversations about going to the park, and that is how easy is it to get in? How, how accessible is the park vis-a-vis -vis reservations, be that for single day tickets or for Magic Keys? It's a little bit difficult to talk about it in terms of what's going to happen in June, because in most cases, the calendars are wide open looking uh, you know, a, a month or a month and a half in advance. But I can tell you right now, something that we're experiencing for Magic Keys is a significant increase in competition for reservations. Today, as I record this in late April, it's very difficult to, to get a, a very a, a desired date, that is, you know, something on the weekends or during one of the events. June, pretty easy to get. So if, if you have certain dates that you want to get now as you're planning for June as a Magic Key holder, you might want to look into maybe maybe choosing one or two of those dates to, to book in advance because they're gonna, as, as we approach the June season, as we approach the summer season, those dates are going to become more increasingly unavailable. Uh, and that's because they have increased the amount of Magic Keys being sold without increasing the number of reservations, the number of people who are allowed into the park. At least that's been my observation. It's actually a conversation we might have, a whole separate conversation, but suffice it to say, it's not particularly easy to get current day reservations in the park. Plan ahead if there are key dates for you Magic Keys. Single day ticket holders, multi-day ticket holders, you're still gonna have a pretty easy time of it. Uh, there's, it's very rare that those dates are sold out even a week before the date that you want. So you don't have to plan quite as far ahead, but if you, do are, if you are a planner, June is readily available for you for single day and multi-day ticket holders. Speaking of planning for the month of June, key dates that you might want to be looking to book dates on, June is going to be obviously full swing for Pixar Fest. Pixar Fest starts on April 26th, but it will be in full swing, as I mentioned, in the middle of June. There's going to be events happening both here at Disneyland and at California Adventure. Here at Disneyland, we're getting fireworks over the castle. The Together Forever show. It's 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 a, it's the same show that they did back in 2018. Uh, they've also got a kid show, a Playtime, the Pixar Playtime show that they're doing at the Fantasyland Theater, and that's going to be kind of a meet and greet type situation. You're going to have uh, characters there on stage at the Fantasyland Theater, photo opportunities, that kind of thing. And then over at DCA, Better Together Parade, which should be very much like the Pixar Play Parade. Uh, that would be my guess anyway. As for fireworks here at Disneyland, same schedule as you might expect for any other fireworks show, 9.30 p.m. Uh, crowds are gonna start forming very early, probably a couple hours early in front of the castle. And for the Disneyland website, there will be nights with no pyro. Typically that means weekdays, uh, Monday through Thursday, no pyro for the better to, or the Together Forever fireworks show, pyro on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. As for Better Together, the parade over at DCA, the Pixar theme parade, Two shows daily, 4 p.m. and 6.30 p.m. on the traditional parade route. And of course, it goes without saying that there's an event happening at the Disney Resort. There's gonna be a lot of food to go with that event. Lots and lots of food for Pixar or for uh, Pixar Fest. We did a whole video covering every detail of this event. Check that out if you have a moment. Otherwise, let's talk about next uh, Pride Night that's happening here also in the month of June. There will be two nights this year, June 18th and June 20th, Pride Nights will happen. By the way, there are tickets still available. If you go to the Disneyland website, you can still purchase a ticket for Pride Night if you're interested. If you are not going to Pride Night, but you are gonna be here in the park, as always, a PSA. Park closes to general guests at 8 p.m. At 8 p.m., all the regular attendees will be 
asked to leave the park. You'll have a couple hours left to go to DCA if you choose. But from 8 p.m. on, this park will be only Pride Night. Now, Pride Night is part of Pride Month, and that will be happening for the entire month of June. Uh, it's going to be the usual type of celebration that you might expect that you can find Pride Night merch available and some themed food. And that again, that will be happening for all of June. June is also a key month for grad nights. That's the thing that's been happening here for years. Uh, it's always been a, a, a point of consideration for people trying to plan their visits to the park. These days, grad night is happening exclusively at DCA. That is to say, you know, the, the special events that they have planned, you know, closing the park early or, the, or extended hours for grad nights are happening at California Adventure. There will still be some teenagers <laughs> in the parks here at Disneyland, but just as an FYI, the, the, the effects on the calendar, the operating schedule will be at DCA. As a matter of fact, one of those effects will be for World of Color, which we haven't, we'll talk about that show in a little bit, but uh, on grad nights, they will limit World of Color at DCA to just the one showing, the nine o'clock showing, and then they have a special showing of World of Color for those grad night attendees that happen after hours. One event that will be winding down in June is Season of the Forest. That's been going on for a little while now. That event ends on June 2nd. So there's gonna be two days for that event, June 1st and June 2nd for Season of the Forest. Otherwise, off the schedule. getting ready for June. It's not Pixar Fest or any of the after dark events or anything like that. For me, the best part about getting ready for June is knowing that Fantasmic will be back performing here on a nightly basis on the rivers of America out in front of Tom Sawyer Island. Two shows nightly, 9 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. back to its old schedule and very much back to its old show you may or may not have heard that well it's, you know we're losing obviously murphy and the big dragon scene but disney is countering that just a little bit by bringing back a little nostalgia they're bringing back the peter pan scene they're taking out pirates from the sailing ship columbia and they're putting back in the peter pan scene i know that there were some folks out there who weren't particularly fond of the pirate scene and much preferred peter pan so for you guys this is going to be a big day for you a big night if you're coming to the parks in June, be prepared to catch Fantasmic twice nightly, 9 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. We did a whole video about finding the optimal space to see this show. I, I would have to assume it still applies. I don't think that the, the rules are gonna be any different, but I will say this, I'll give you this tip while I've got you around, while I have your attention. If you can, wait for the 10.30 show. Skip the 9 p.m. show, wait for the 10.30 show. It's, it's not, it's, it's a little easier to find your spot for that 10.30 show than it is a night. Otherwise, with other shows around the park, as I mentioned earlier, fireworks, 9.30 p.m., or I should say, Together Forever, that nighttime spectacular will be appearing nightly at 9.30 p.m. Pyro, depending on the evening that you're here. Check your schedule on that, by the way. Check your schedule for Magic Happens also. That's a parade that's happening here. It has been for a while. It's, it's permanently back. Two shows daily on most days. 3 p.m. and 5.30, although there are some days where they do just the one show, a 3 p.m. show. Typically, those are weekdays, but it's not even always that that is the case. And sometimes it is the case where on a Thursday or something like that, they will still do the two shows. It varies enough that I would recommend just checking the calendar. I'll show you how to do that here if you're not sure on the app or on the website. This is the app. Uh, check the calendar on your specific day to see if they're showing a 3 and a 5.30 or just a 3 p.m. Meanwhile, World of Color, two shows nightly also, 9 p.m. and 10, 15 p.m. Also, as mentioned earlier on grad nights, they do not have the 10, 15 show. It is just the 9 p.m. show, and they do a special show for those grad night attendees. Finally, let's talk about ride closures. There are some obvious ones. Right behind me is the Haunted Mansion. That is an obvious one. It has been closed since January, and it's going to be closed for a little while still. It definitely will be closed for all of June. Uh, the expectation is that it reopens sometime in August in time for the Halloween season. Also going to be closed for the entire month of June is Splash Mountain. It's going, well, AKA Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Uh, do not expect that attraction to be open in June. 
One of the not so obvious ones will be Critter Country. Critter Country is closing so they can update Pooh Corner and Briar Patch, the gift shops. So we're going to update those in preparation for the update to Tiana's. Critter Country is closing in May. It's indefinite. They haven't said when it'll reopen or how long this update will take. I would guess that Critter Country will be down for the month of June, but it's possible that it could reopen at some point in June. We just don't know yet for sure. What they're doing is not extensive, so it should possibly be just a month or so to get that done, maybe a month and a half, who knows. Uh, but for now, I would plan for Critter Country to be closed in June. And that's it, that's all we know for sure that's on the, the refurb calendar today or how things will look in June. Right now, uh, great moments with Ms. Mr. Lincoln and the Redwood Creek Challenge. Those are two attractions that are on the calendar today with an indefinite uh, you know, reopening period. We don't know when they're gonna reopen, although I would expect to see probably both of those open by the time June comes around. Again, stay tuned to Fresh Bake, our, our construction reports. We do a report every single week to update you guys on all the construction work that's going on around the park. So you'll know via those, those shows, those weekly Monday shows, what's gonna be happening as we approach the month of June. I look forward to seeing you here in the parks in the month of June. And we will see each other because I'm here all the time. <laughs> I'm here, there is no planning for Fresh Bake. I'm here week in and week out, soak it in the magic and wonder that is Disneyland. I hope I do see you guys though in June. If you have any questions about what's gonna be happening in June, if you need a little planning advice, let me know. Ask us in the comments, we'll be happy to help. Also, if you're planning a trip, let me just go ahead and add this here. Please do consider going through uh, our sponsor, Getaway Today. We love Getaway Today, they are great. <laughs> They're the nicest people. They know everything there is to know about planning a trip at Disneyland, all the hotels, all the, all the packages. We love Getaway Today. They take good care of us uh, and, and I know that they will take good care of you too. So, so if you're planning a trip, to the Disneyland Resort, you could do no better than going through Getaway today. Let them know that we sent you. Use the link in the description, and that way they know that we sent you. Otherwise, thanks for watching, everybody. We love you. Be safe out there. Be kind to one another. Fresh bake. It's time to celebrate friendship and beyond. Your favorite hits our